What's up guys, Artem MMA Analysis here. I'm going to be talking about Eagle FC. This fight um, video will probably be a relatively quick breakdown um, of these fights, but I will be giving you guys my picks. I will be giving you guys a preview. And um, we've got we've got Tierra Sanchez and Kevin Lee in the in the headliner. Interesting fight. In the co-main event, we've actually got the heavyweight championship on the line. Anthony Hamilton coming off a loss in Eagle FC. Gets the fight against Rizvan Kuniev. I mean, guess it is what it is. Uh, Ray Borg versus Ricky Bandeas. That's an awesome fight. A little bit of an older prospect with a great record. Henderson Fajaya on there. Uh, Impa Kasagane and Raymond Magomedaliev on that one as well. Daryl Horcher, the guy that stepped up on short notice to fight Khabib in the UFC, actually had a pretty good first round with Khabib. Khabib definitely showing him a little bit of respect here, putting him on his card. Obviously, Daryl Horcher has respect enough for Khabib to jump on his Eagle FC card as well. Former UFC fighter Nashon Burrell, still pretty young for that record, 19 and 11, but he is fighting a killer in Ikram Alaskarov. The only man, well, sorry, the only loss to Ikram's record is actually against Kamzat Shemaev. I think everyone kind of recognized that. A pretty good prospect in Archie Colgan as well. Um, Sadiq Mudayev, who, who fought on Eagle FC 45. And uh, also this first fight of the night, man. I'm a little bit nervous to make the pick. We've got Ryder Newman and Manny Wallow. The pick is um, not confident, to be honest, at whatsoever. We've got Ryder Newman with his wrestling background. He's obviously, you guys probably know him. You guys either love him or hate him by now. He's on the Ultimate Fighter. And uh, he had his only fight in the Ultimate Fighter against Treshawn Gore. I picked Treshawn Gore to win that fight. And uh, Ryder Newman just was outstruck by Treshawn Gore on the feet for the whole fight, pretty much. And um, it, was a, it was relatively competitive, but Treshawn Gore definitely did win it. Uh, after that, though, he did fight uh, Cole Schaefer, who was 3-1, and in 22 seconds, knocked him out. Manny Wallow, on the other hand, though, let's talk about this guy. Former Cage Fury FC champion, has fought some pretty good names on the regional scene. He's also fought a few um, UFC fighters as well on the regional scene. Well, his last fight was in 2019, almost three years ago. Um, it's pretty hard to to know what he's going to look like, especially upper weight class as well. He used to fight at 170, now he's fighting at 185. But he's got wins over Jeremiah Wells. That's a, that's a guy that ended up in the UFC. And also a couple of decent guys in the regional scene as well. Over on the what used to be the what is now the PFL World Series of Fighting as well. And uh, he was, as I said, the champion of Cage Fury FC um, a few years ago. Ryder Newman with that wrestling background. He went 9-9 nine and nine in his wrestling career in college. But he has been training in the, in the past, prior to university, the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, and he also finished sixth in the Freestyle Nationals as a sophomore in high school for wrestling. On the other hand, though, uh, Manny Wallow in the past, man, he's been training with some very good guys. He's been training with a third degree, Henzo Gracie Black Belt with uh, Jamal Peterson. He's also been uh, sparring and fine-tuning at the Henzo Gracie Academy in New York as well. Where is he training now? I'm not actually too sure if he's still going to be at the Henzo Gracie Academy or this driven gym either. Because um, he hasn't fought in three years and he's fighting upper weight class as well. I think we're going to see Ryder Newman use this as a very big um, opportunity to potentially boost his stock, get his name back in Dana White's um, kind of radar to get back into the UFC. Because I know that he's got a taste of it now. He's probably going to want to get in the UFC. I'm picking Ryder Newman with, with no confidence whatsoever. I think realistically Manny Wallow could probably get the job done and do it and put on a pretty good performance, but he hasn't fought in three years. I can't trust that. I'm picking Ryder Newman. Uh, Manny Wallow currently minus 150 plus 120 favorite, so I'm going to be picking him to win the fight at the moment. All right, we're going to look at some more fights now. We've got Kai Uruguay versus Satik Mudeyev. Satik Mudeyev uh, made his Eagle FC debut only four weeks ago in Eagle FC 44. Unfortunately, he did lose to Ayadi Majerin. Uh, both guys kind of gassed out on that fight. It was a really weird one, but the only other hand, we've got Kai Uruguay. A Sanford MMA prospect guy that's been fighting over at Titan FC. Going to be making his Eagle FC debut um, this weekend here. But uh, he went on a little bit of a losing streak. He beat a 5-2 and two guy. But before that though, he was losing to competition at Titan FC. And over at XMMA as well. He is pretty good though. He's got a Muay Thai striking background. Sadiq Mudeyev though. I did actually find... Um, I believe this is the same guy, Sadiq Mudeyev. Um, a... Um, a, a Abu Dhabi World Jiu-Jitsu Championship in 2013, Sadiq Mudeyev. So we do know that he's got a little bit of a grappling background. We do know that he's got a little bit of grappling in there as well. I believe um he's also, I've read somewhere that he's also got a striking background. But if you Google this guy, Sadiq Mudeyev, you really don't find anything. So it is pretty difficult to find information on him. Really, all you can go after 
is that a fight against Ayadi Mojadeen, which is free to watch on FLX Cast um, because Eagle FC just posts all of their their previous fights on there. So you can watch that if you want to. Uh, wasn't wasn't the greatest fight in the world, but it was relatively interesting. It was a weird one though because it was first a it was Ayadi's first fight in like four years. I was pretty confident picking Sadiq in that one, and he let me down. I'm I'm still gonna pick Sadiq to win this one here. I do think he's going to get the job done, probably by a decision or even a submission. Kyo Uruguay, on the other hand, of his eight wins, five of them are decision wins. He's not the biggest finisher in the world. I do think the fight does go the distance, as so do the fans, so I'm going to go with Mudeyev on this one. I think he's actually the underdog as well, if I can just find him on my, my list here. He, he is a slight underdog. He's minus 110 at the moment, but I believe he opened. He opened minus 115. He ended up as the favorite. And now he's the very, very slight underdog. Let's just pick him odds in this fight here. I think it's a fight to avoid the bet, <laughs> personally. Um, but yeah, I'm going Sadiq Mudeyev in this one. Uh, the next fight I'll be talking about is Tyler Ray versus Thomas Webb. I'm going to be picking Tyler Ray with quite a bit of confidence. I believe he's an insane, uh, like, minus 500 favor or something insane like that. Yeah, he is. He's minus 500. The odds actually opened with Tyler, Tyler Ray, apparently, only minus 185. But uh, REF just boost the odds to minus 500 or an insane amount of money come down on Tyler Ray. Um, either way, though, he is a prospect. He's fighting out of Sanford MMA as well. You will notice there's a few Sanford MMA guys on this card. Um, so, so he's got a win over John Howard. A, a couple of good guys over um, on the regional scene. Thomas Webb, on the other hand, hasn't fought for quite a while. We're talking about two and a half years off layoff. The guy is 39 years old. He's fighting at welterweight again, so um, I don't know if he was cutting that much weight to make welterweight previously, but he's going to have to cut that weight again as, as a 39-year-old. Um, my computer just froze, and we're going to have to be stuck on this blue screen. Oh, no, we're not. But, um, yeah, he's beaten, and he's lost a good competition in the past, but the problem is that was a while ago. He's 39. Tyler Ray, pretty good. Um, I believe, yeah, I googled this guy. Sorry, he's got a good wrestling background as well, MMA background too. I like the level of competition that he has been fighting on the regional scene. It's not like he's been crushing guys with losing records, and he does have pretty good power in the hands as well if he wants to let them loose, but he's more of a, um, more of a decision ground and pound sort of guy. Um... Yeah, so by the wins, he's got one win by KO, four by submission, four by decision. He wants to take the, the fight to the ground. He wants to ground and pound you out or, or search for that submission. Now, he will be doing that in this fight. I can see Tyler Ray taking the fight over. Uh, let's look at the prediction. I'm pretty sure it's pretty skewed. 95% Ray, mainly by decision. I think he probably could finish at 39-year-old Thomas Webb, though. Reggie Pena versus Ronnie Marks. This is a fight where I'm very interested to see... Like where the uh, where the opinions are going because we've got a 39 year old Reggie Pena fighting at 205 pounds and he last fought at 170. That is definitely the main thing that I want to bring up in this one. Reggie Pena fought at 170 in his last fight and that was only one month and four days ago. Now he's going to be fighting at light heavyweight at 205 pounds against a guy who last weighed in at 220 pounds. There's going to be a size difference in this one, then. And uh, Reggie Pena is the favorite. Yeah, I do believe that Reggie Pena may have a, have made the better skill set. He does have pretty good wins in the MMA circuit. Ronnie Marks is going to be a big guy in there. I know that there's not too much of um of a size discrepancy here, but Ronnie Marks fighting out of Extreme Contour with a much more natural light heavyweight as well. Reggie Pena coming up. That's two divisions uh, for this fight. I uh, don't really know how I feel about that one. Let's have a look. Reggie Pena. Oh, sorry. I lied to you guys, man. I lied to you guys bad. Reggie Pena is the underdog. Sorry, I thought he was the favorite at one point. I'm an idiot, guys. I'm a massive idiot. So, Ronnie Marks opened minus 500, and now the odds have closed up quite a bit there. Minus 220 at the moment. I'm sorry. I, I, had, those, I had those odds run the wrong way. I'm going Ronnie Marks to win the fight, though. Very interested to see that a lot of people are picking Pena by KO. Um... It's a light heavyweight fight, man. I don't know if the fight's going to finish. Uh, he's on a... Reggie Pena's on a streak right now, though. But uh, Ronnie Marks has pretty good wins himself. He did, he did lose a couple of fights in Bellator. He won a fight in PFL as well. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to trust in Ronnie Marks to get the job done. I know he, he, a lot of people picking Pena. That might be because of his winning streak. But I don't like the size difference. You guys got to look at that size difference in the last way and Massive difference. Archie Colgan versus Dylan Mantello confidence in, in Archie Colgan from this one here. I was actually researching this guy just before I started recording the video. Should have left the tab open. But um, you guys, you look at this guy's wrestling record and he's legitimate, man. Uh, if you look, he went 78 and 32 overall as a career. Uh, shout out to the Wyoming um, University. They post a lot. They post full on, um, 
stuff to read about on this guy, but this guy is uh is pretty legitimate. He placed fifth at the NHCSCA Senior Nationals and became an all to become an All American in high school, and uh, he went quite well in um in wrestling just in general. He got red shirted in 2013, 2014, which I believe is when you take a year off, but you're still in competition, so you can continue. That's what I understood when I googled what it meant. Cause I, I'm not, I'm not from, I'm not from USA, guys. I'm from New Zealand. We don't have a wrestling culture uh, in high school or university or anything like that. I'm going Archie Colgan. He's a pretty good prospect. I really do wonder where this photo was taken, though. As you can see, he's got the UFC wraps on. Must be the UFC PI or one of them to have that kind of wrap and not be a UFC fighter or fight in the UFC. Dylan Mantello, on the other hand, though, experienced. He's got a very good amateur record. He's only actually lost one time in his pro career. I believe he actually went undefeated in that amateur record as well. And he did. And he thought some pretty good amateur guys, a 7-2 and two guy in his final fight before he decided to jump up to um to Eagle FC and he lost to a more experienced guy in John Ramirez who was five and five who you can tell he was probably set up to win. He lost that fight unfortunately there. Archie Colgan, I think he's just gonna out wrestle the man um for the three rounds. Maybe even find a finish. I mean this guy is a finisher for sure. He's got knockout power on the feet. All three of his amateur wins by KO. Uh two of his wins are, um in the pro scene by KO and uh one submission as well. I'm going to go with Archie Colgan to win the fight. I do believe he's going to finish it inside the distance. There's a lot of confidence in Colgan. A lot of people picking a decision that might be because of his wrestling heavy style. Might be because Mantello is a pretty legitimate guy himself. Archie Colgan, ground and pound TKO, may be a decision as well. But if you look at the odds, man, minus 500 for Archie Colgan. This guy's only 3-0. I wouldn't really be throwing down at minus 500 on a guy that's that's pretty unproven. Erwin Rivera, just coming fresh off a UFC release, unfortunately for him. He lost a split decision to Andre Ewell, who also just got released from the UFC in the last week, which was about a year and a half ago. Ali Akasi, he won a split decision there, and he lost it to Giga Chikadze, which, in hindsight, man, at the time it might have been a bad loss, but uh, Giga Chikadze is a top 10 featherweight right now, so you can't really blame a man for losing to Giga Chikadze as he was on his way up a couple of years ago. And he's got good wins on the regional scene as well. Not really the cleanest record in the world at 10 and 6, but I do believe he is going to beat Fredov's Kasanov in this one here, who's wearing those UFC gloves there. Uh, I wonder where he got them from. I was going to say maybe he fought on Dana White's Contender Series, but no, because I researched this guy, man. Because um, he just lost to Sean Bunch. That's right, Sean Bunch. This is so weird, but I swear, um, DC, um, like Daniel Cormier... And all of the guys on the commentary team knew who the Sean Bunch was. And they were all talking about Sean Bunch and how good he was as a wrestler. But I believe he was actually the underdog in that fight there. And the fight was close. The fight was very close. And Sean Bunch got hurt on the feet. I believe he even got knocked down uh, by Fredavs a couple of times. I'm just wondering if he's got a fight lined up, but he doesn't. Um, yeah, that was just weird. I thought I'd point that out. Now he's fighting Erwin Rivera. Unfortunately for for Dubs, he's good. He's got power on the feet as well. He could definitely knock out Owen, but I do think I'm just gonna go with Owen Rivera to win this fight, man. I do think he's a little bit more reliable. He's got that UFC experience. He's showing that he can hang in there with some of the better uh, bantamweights in the world as well. And I believe that Kaze fight would have been at 145 too. But um, yeah, wow, a lot of people picking Rivera. I'm going Rivera as well. I do think he's gonna get the job done. And um, I don't understand what this breakdown means. Can someone please explain it to the comments? I think I'm just too stupid to understand. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, this is a guy that the UFC needs to sign. The UFC need to sign Ikram Aliskerov. In fact, the, the UFC should probably just sign the winner of this fight, in my opinion. Nashon Burrell, former UFC fighter, but when he fought in the UFC, I believe he's like 24 years old. This is like eight years ago. Ikram Aliskerov, on the other hand, Sambo champion. His one loss, you will see he's 11 and 1. That one loss is to Kamzat Shemaev three years ago when he was 8 and 0. On a pretty crazy fight card, actually. There's a lot of knockouts on that card. After that, though, he has gone on a bit of a winning streak. He's very well rounded. He kind of has a Kamzat Shemaev kind of style. Nashon Burrell, on the other hand, a guy that was in the UFC at one point. He's not anymore, and he has gone on a little bit of a win streak since then, but. He did go on a big losing streak as well, kind of after that release. But let's just talk about it. So he went into the UFC in 2013. This guy is how old now? 32. So he would have been like 23, 24 on that card. Fought on Rousey versus Carmouche. That's a different time. Lost to Wonderboy Thompson. Not that bad of a loss in hindsight, guys, man. But he got released from there. He has fought on Bellator as well. This guy's kind of been around a lot of different um, organizations. Went 0-3 in ACB. 
uh, to Albert Tumanov, former UFC fighter as well, pretty good guy there. And um, but yeah, he, he's he's racked up a decent win streak, uh, a win over Kyle Stewart as well, and the in the main event of Cage Fury UFC, I believe that was actually for. Was this? no, I don't think it was for a title. Anyway, um, Nashon Burrell, good fighter, but I do think Ikram Malaskarov is going to take uh, care of him. I think that uh, um, Nashon probably could excel on the feet, but we've got to really consider the guy that Ikram Malaskarov is, and I think that this is a guy is a guy that the UFC should be looking at. He's only 29 years old, has won losses to Kamzat Shemaev. I feel like if he did get signed, a lot of people would start talking about it. Maybe even Kamzat Shemaev would make a comment. So you've got all of a sudden you've got a guy with a. Uh, with it, with um, oh, name value behind him. He's also finding out a champion. I recognised the name of that gym from somewhere, but I just it slipped my mind. But anyway, let's look at the odds. What are we looking at for this fight here? Ikram Alaskarov minus two hundred, minus two hundred. Hey man, I don't know man. I, I feel like there's this value there. I feel like, I think there's good value of minus two hundred in Ikram. Might look at that too. Um, Daryl Horcher. Daryl Horcher is the guy that stepped in on short notice to fight Khabib. I mentioned that in the interview and in, in the in the intro, sorry. But uh, since then he hasn't really looked too hot. He's two and three at the moment on the regional scene. But he did get a he did he did win. A, oh, sorry, not on the regional scene. Um, includes USC win over Devin Powell. But he did lose to Scott Holtzman and Roosevelt Roberts. And Rob, Roosevelt Roberts isn't even in the UFC anymore. But he did uh, win over Cage Fury. He's got a loss to um, Olivia Owen Mercier, who's actually a pretty good uh, prospect over at PFL. But uh, I'll show you guys what I mean. Like he, he came in against Khabib and Magomedov on short notice when he was 12 and one, got ground and pounded out in the second round. But he actually did put on a pretty good performance in the first first sort of round. Everyone was picking Khabib back then. Then <laughs> this is Khabib on his way up to the title. He's 22 and 0 at the time. That's something insane. But with respect to Daryl Horcho, I know that Khabib would be definitely be respecting him to put him in his promotion. Unfortunately, though, I just don't think that this is going to be his uh, his fight to win. I do think we're going to see Ahmed Ali have put on a a pretty good performance. I think we're going to see him put him put on a pretty good wrestling based performance. He fights at the Eagles MMA Academy. Um. And my, oh man, why does this happen, guys, in the middle of my video? My, my Chrome just, 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 uh, just froze. So I'm going to be back in a second. All right, man, we're back. Just uh, going to say a couple of things and we'll move on to the next fight. I do respect Khabib and Daryl Horcher for uh, kind of linking up on this card, man. Daryl Horcher fighting under Khabib's card. That's kind of random. Um, Ahmed Aliyev, on the other hand, he has beaten very good guys in the PFL. He's actually coming off the PFL just last year, locked, lost to Luke Karazabov. Who is, uh, I think, actually signed to Eagle FC himself, is he not? But he beat um 18 and 2 guy, beat a 23 and 4 guy. Like, this guy's got gr good grappling. Akhmed Aliyev decision is my pick. He is minus 400, though, um, when it comes to the betting line. So maybe he's a little bit wide. I don't know how much confidence you could put on him to throw him in a parlay. But um, Akhmed Aliyev, though, he is my pick. Alright, this is a good one. This is a very, very good one. Raymond Magomedaliev versus Imbika Saganai. Raymond Magomedaliev also only fought four weeks ago against Anthony Njokwani. Took him down and just ground and pounded him out. The fight wasn't really that close. To be honest, it wasn't even that competitive. Um, no disrespect to Njokwani, but he was on like a five-fight losing streak anyway before going into that fight. Probably shouldn't have been booked. It was definitely like a showcase fight for Ryman to look good on a pretty big card. And now we're getting a fight between Ryman Magomedaliev and a former UFC fighter. A guy that just got released from the UFC very, very recently as well. Down at Welterweight. It's going to be interesting um, considering Ryman most recently fought at 185. Is he going to have a good weight cut? Is he going to be able to make 170 without any problems? And because Sangani is a guy that I think that... Uh, it kind of sucks that he got that he got cut from the UFC so early. He came off the uh, the uh, Dana White's contender series with a win. He beat Maki Patolo in a, in, a, in a competitive fight. He, he he then he got knocked out by Joaquin Buckley, which kind of sucks. He got he submitted Sasha Palatnikov. Um, I believe he knocked him down. Yeah, he did. He knocked him down in the second round and then submitted him, but then got um knocked out by Carlston Harris. It was a very very good prospect himself, although old, still a good prospect, Carlston Harris. I do think that uh. Potentially a little bit unfair that he got dropped from the UFC, man. He's 2-2 two and two and fighting out of Sanford MMA, which is a very good gym. But now he's going to be looking to find a home elsewhere. And maybe maybe that place could be Eagle FC if Khabib keeps putting on these uh, American-based cards so often. I mean, he's doing one once a month. I mean, we've only got two months in a row. But if he keeps doing it, then it's going to be quite good. 
I just don't think that Impa Kasangana is going to be able to stop the wrestling of Magomed Medaliev. I'm sorry, I know it really sucks. I don't really want to pick against the UFC guy. But I will be picking Raiman to win this fight. This is a, a guy who um who I have confidence in. This is a guy that UFC, that Eagle FC, sorry, is obviously trying to build. But he is 32 years old. He's probably beyond that prospect point. He's probably not a guy that the UFC is going to be looking to sign at that age. But, I mean, they did sign... um. Um, that guy that's 35, the guy that I bet money on in the UFC, but no, we won't be talking about that one too much. Ryman um, Magomedaliev, very small favorite. I like that line if you're jumping on that. I think you might actually like the line of Imbika Sanganai as an underdog as well if you're on the Imbika Sanganai side. But I do think Ryman Magomedaliev is probably just going to out-hustle him in the wrestling department, throw off that Russian wrestling that uh, we, we see all the time, pushing him up against the cage, looking for the choke. I think he's either going to get a ground and pound TKO or a submission. Um, Henderson Verheya, as I said, an older prospect. He is almost 34 years old, but he is a prospect nonetheless, I guess. And it is fight taking place at super lightweight. So I think that Eagle FC is really trying to build the super lightweight division by putting guys in there with good records to build them up. Like, we've got um, Lloyd Karatsubov, as I was just talking about before, in the super lightweight division. Henderson Verheyen in the super light lightweight division. Maybe if uh, he wins this fight, he calls out Kevin Lee. Like, who knows what's going to happen. We don't have a belt on the line in the, in the main event, so... Um, I mean, I, in my opinion, we should. I don't see why you, why you wouldn't put uh, Kevin Lee versus uh, D.A. Sanchez for the 165 final belt, but, but that's another problem. That's another conversation. Uh, Henderson for Hayley going to have to make that weight cut down to 165. So is Zach. Both of these guys more natural uh, welterweights. But obviously jumping at the opportunity at a new weight class are good for them. Unfortunately though, Zach has been on a 1-4 and four losing streak. Hasn't been too active. I mean, recently he's been active. But he went uh, away for quite a while. Lost a few fights. He did beat a guy at 8-5 XMA on the regional scene. But then he lost to a 4-1 guy on the regional scene. Henderson for Hayley on the other hand, very, very good record man this guy's pretty legitimate in my opinion nine and two over ue where he worries 11 and one three and one i guess yeah um, but he has been been winning over at pfl as well and um you can't really discredit pfl because pfl is one of the better um organizations outside of the ufc in bellator in my opinion like this guy's got this guy hasn't been been padding his record he's been fighting against good fighters the whole time one of his losses to the 2021 champion ray cooper the third can't complain at that too much. I mean, early on he was uh, he was fighting lower level competition, but seven wins by KO, two by submission, eight by decision. I do think we're going to see a finish in this fight here for Henderson Fajaya. He hasn't got a win uh, inside the distance until since he fought that guy that was in three and one. He finished him in the first round. I think Henderson Fajaya is going to outclass um, Zach Dusola. No disrespect to him, but I just don't think that he is at the same level as Henderson Fajaya. We're going to see Henderson Fajaya get the job done. Um, 99% of people picking him out of 200 votes. That is absolutely insane. Um, I don't disagree. Henderson Fajaya minus 600. Pretty wide, man, but he's still deserving of that. And speaking of, speaking of wide odds, man. Oh, not this fight. Speaking of wide odds, I'm going to talk about the Ray Borg fight. According to, um, the only bidding, um, line that I have actually at, at the moment is REF. They have Ray Borg minus 700. That is ridiculous, man. I know that he apparently opened up minus 200. And now, I don't know if this is the bookie doing this and just constantly pushing him to be a bigger favorite. Or if this is just someone or, or some people loading up insane amounts of money to make him this big of a favorite. I don't think it's that. I think it's more the bookie have realized that they made the line too close. Now they're trying to open it up a little bit as money is coming in. But minus 700... Nah, man, I don't think it's minus 700. But uh, the, with that being said, though, the pick is definitely Ray Borg. Ricky Bandeas, on the other hand, though, there's a few things I've got to say about this guy. He's definitely a good prospect. He's definitely going to be a good addition to Eagle FC if they decide to keep him on, which I think that they should. He did go 3-4 and four in Bellator, so we did have a losing record in Bellator. But his losses to, to those guys, they were to the top guys in Bellator. Like, the four losses, Juan Archuleta, Patchy Mitch... Sergio Pettis and Leandro Higo, like these were the, their prospects, their top four guys. He was a ranked contender at Bellator at one point. He, he won his debut in that very viral um, knockout over James Gallagher, a guy which I think a lot of people were very happy to see knocked out. Um, and then again, the, the the next two were were a second round KO, a first round KO. All of his wins were pretty big KOs in that Bellator, but they still let him go anyway. He decided to continue a career in Combate Global. 
But he went 2-1 and one there, now he's fighting at Eagle FC. I think he's going to be a great, great addition to Eagle FC, uh, in my opinion. But I just think that Ray Borg's going to have his number. I do genuinely believe that Ray Borg is still up there, probably in the top 25 bantamweights, just in general right now. And it's a shame that the UFC let him go. They obviously didn't want him because he, he pulled out of a lot of fights when he was fighting down at 125. But uh, now, he's, now that he's back up at... Um, at 135, he's looking pretty good. He fought former UFC fighter Cody Gibson. And if Cody Gibson won that fight, the UFC would have signed him again. Um, there's no doubt in my mind about that one there. But, um, yeah, Ricky Bundaya is going to have an insane reach and height advantage. But I just don't think it's going to matter. I do think that Ray Ball is just that little bit better. I think he's a bit better on the ground. Would I pick him minus 700? Absolutely not. But I am going to still ride with Ray Borg. Submission or decision. I think he's just going to control Ricky Bandeas on the ground. Ricky Bandeas is kind of live for a KO. He doesn't have that many KOs in his career, but he did go three, um, three for three, and KO wins when he when he fought in Bellator. So you got to respect that sort of side. Rizvan Kuniev versus Anthony Hamilton. I did break down Rizvan Kuniev quite in depth when he fought on Dana White's Contender Series, I believe. I believe he's like my most viewed video on YouTube is me breaking down Rizvan Kuniev versus Edivan Santos. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Anthony Hamilton, though, former UFC fighter. He is 42 years old, though. He's getting old. He's getting the title shot off a loss. Um, personally, I don't really know how that works, considering he did get knocked out in that in that fight. Uh, why don't give it to this Vladimir Dayniko guy? Why not give it to the to um the guy that beat um the guy that won on Eagle FC 44? I've already forgotten his name. Why not give the title shot to Jorgen De Castro? Even I feel like that's probably fights that would make more sense I, I just duplicated the same screen that i had open but you guys know what i'm talking about um um the guy that beat um spong tyrone spong <laughs> i'm sorry man i forgot his name but yeah at least break down this fight i do think riz van Kuniv is just going to ground and pound anthony hamilton this one we're talking about a 42 year old anthony hamilton we're talking about a guy that got submitted by francis and garnu and made and garnu look good on the ground before um before Stipe um, kind of uh, controlled him that well. But yeah, he this is a guy that got Kamoro by Francis Ngannou in the first round. Uh, he also got knocked out twice in his, in his UFC tenure. I mean, he has been in there with Ngannou. Oh, you've got to give him that credit. And he was in the UFC for a very long time. But he's just an older guy now at this point, And I don't think that he's just going to be ready for the Eagle FC title shot. And I don't really know why he's getting it either. I've just lost my mouse. Because my... Mouse has decided to not work. Man, why are so many technical difficulties? I had technical difficulties at work today as well. I just cannot win, eh? But nah, I'm going to respond to Kuniev. Anthony Hamilton won his Eagle FC, lost his Eagle FC debut. I don't really understand why he's going to beat the champion of Eagle FC either. This is a showcase fight for Rizvan Kuniev. He's going to win the fight for sure. Rizvan Kuniev, ground and pound KO. I don't even know what the odds are, but if they're actually pretty juicy, they oh, he's minus 500, actually. They might be worth a stab, though. A parlay piece. I'm very confident in Rizvan Kuniev in this fight here. I do think he's going to uh, to win the fight for sure. Speaking of a confident pick, I'm going to go with Kevin Lee. He's probably, once again, arguably a top 20 lightweight um, in the world still. Maybe top 25 lightweight in the world still. And... Um, he hasn't found the success at welterweight that he wanted. It's definitely worth saying that he didn't look too great at welterweight. He lost to Ali Quinta, lost to RDA. The RDA fight was at 170. The Gregor Gillespie uh, win was at 155. I mean, he, he kind of got went up and down. Charles Oliveira was at 155. Daniel Rodriguez was at 170. Now he's fought at 165. A weight class I know that Kevin Lee is very excited about for sure. And uh, very excited to take on. Um, Diego Sanchez, on the other hand, we're talking about a 40-year-old Diego Sanchez. This guy was a beast back in the day. I believe at one point he was like 19-1 and one or like 18-0 and 0 or something insane like that. And he went on a run, man. He went on the run. We're talking about a former champion, talking about a guy that was on the Ultimate Fighter Season 1. But uh, he got released from the UFC uh, after that loss. He also had that really weird stint with that really weird guy whose name I've actually completely forgot. But he did, he did beat, I guess he technically beat Michelle Pajaya. I guess he, uh, he he lost to Michael Chiesa, which kind of happens. But he does have wins, man. He does have wins, but he's just not the same guy anymore. He's not a guy I can trust to beat Kevin Lee, is what I'm trying to say. I do think Diego Sanchez still kind of has a bit of a dog in him. I do believe Diego Sanchez probably could beat some lesser opponents. But unfortunately for Diego, his name is so big, it's not really like you can just give him guys that are... 
you know, just not not as great as what Diego Sanchez is, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I do wish him the best. I do think Kevin Lee's going to win this fight, kind of however he wants it. I know the bookie that I've got in New Zealand has Kevin Lee at like minus 1,000. The REF has him at minus 800. Like, apparently the odds open at minus 400. That's pretty ridiculous, man. I would put Kevin Lee... Yeah, I'd put Kevin Lee as a very big favourite here. I'm sorry, Diego Sanchez. I just don't think he's going to win the fight. Kevin Lee, um, however he wants, really. He's pretty good on the ground. He's pretty good on the feet as well. I just hope that he doesn't knock out Diego Sanchez. I do not want to see a knockout. I'd rather see Kevin Lee just take him down and submit him. But Diego Sanchez is legit on the ground, too. If Diego Sanchez wins this fight, I don't care, man. That makes him a legend, like, in the modern era as well. <laughs> but no, unfortunately for Diego, man, I've just got to pick Kevin Lee. I don't think Diego should be fighting anymore. I think a lot of people can agree.